Hello, everybody. I think um, we're going to, everybody's still joining. We have some people still joining with us, but we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, this is being recorded, so we can um, view this later um, as well. So if you if you miss out or miss part of it, you can always um, come back and view it. Um, but I want to thank everybody for joining us today. My name is Kim, and I am one of the sales reps here with Exapta Solutions. Um, just to let you know, if you have any questions during the presentation, uh, you can click on either the Q&A button or the chat button at the top of the screen, um, and we'll get those questions, and um, we'll open it up at the end of the presentation um, to hopefully get some of those questions answered. Um, however, if we run out of time, um, Dale, Ethan, or I will reach out to you personally, um, and we'll hopefully we'll get those questions answered for you. I have Dale Ness here with me today. Um, he's going to discuss the John Deere drill wear parts uh, you need to look for, uh, offer tips and maintenance, and discuss products that will help with some of the challenges of no-till farming. Um, besides being our sales manager, uh, Dale is our senior sales rep here, and uh, he is an avid no-till and regenerative ag producer himself and brings a wealth of knowledge uh, regarding the challenges of no-till farming along with hands-on experience. Um, so here's Dale. Thank you, Kim. Before we get rolling, there's two people I want to recognize uh, that made this day possible uh, that aren't able to join us today. Uh, first and foremost is we just want to uh, thank you to Matt Hagney, our founder that we lost a few years ago, and also to his sister, Emily, Emily Downs, who is now the CEO and owner of Exapta. And and she's actually presenting today in Denver uh, to a peer group there about Exapta and about uh, no-till agriculture. So with that said, let's get going on, uh, on our webinar today. So what are we trying to accomplish? I think we would all agree that we're all after uniform high emergence stands in all of our crops on all of the acres. And to accomplish that, we're going to need to have consistent seed placement and also hopefully be able to lower our seeding rates and still hit those target populations. Everything we talk about today is going to be specific to the John Deere 50, 60, 90, and now the new N-series uh, drills. What we're going to do is break things down into the four, what we call these four discrete steps for optimum placement, which is very simply cut, place, firm, and close. And within those steps, we're just going to walk through what the John Deere row unit does and how it achieves those steps. So being a single disc opener, we do need to cut the furrow to a consistent depth to accomplish that. First and foremost, sharp opener blades with a deep bevel are a must. Uh, we recommend replacing those blades at 17 and 3 8 in diameter. Anything less than that, if we run that blade down farther, your, your bevel is gone and you're working with a dull or a blunt blade, and you also lose the blade orientation which is not a big deal until you go to replace your blades and you don't know which way they belong. There is a very specific orientation for that blade and to uh, and we'll touch on that again in in the next couple of slides of the bevel always needs to be against the boot. And also we we're going to talk about down pressure, frame weight and this very important 7 degree angle cutting angle that's built into that opener. On the blade, there is a, a, a shortcut easy way to measure that blade diameter because the uh, uh, if you walk out to your, your drill, your machine, the gauge wheel is in the way to be able to get an accurate measurement. And so uh, rather than take the time to remove the gauge wheel, here's a shortcut. Go to the inside of the blade measure from the lip of the hub to the lip of the blade a brand new 18 inch diameter blade that measurement is six and a quarter when we wear it down to that 17 and 3 8 that i just talked about previous that inside measurement will be five and seven eighths and again this picture you can still identify that bevel 
is on the inside against the boot, and that is the correct position. One of the things we offer at Exapta is the forged to new opener blade. There is a specific reason why we offer the forged to new blade because it is the best blade that we have run across on the market today. Forged to new has perfected a way to heat treat that outer lip, the cutting edge, and make it harder than the body of the blade. And that's what the color is showing there with the, the red on the outside diameter of the cutting edge and then the color changing and that's to simulate the hardness of the blade. We don't want to make the entire blade harder because then it would be more prone to crack or to break. Um, there are there are very there's quite a few uh, manufacturers of blades on the market with varying degrees of quality and, and cost. Uh, there's even what's been called or termed an oversized blade out there that starts out at, I believe, an 18 and 5 eighths inch diameter. I would be very cautious of that. Uh, and in the no-till situations, I don't understand the logic of why we would want to operate with a full 18 inch diameter dull blade. Um, for those of you that, that for the for the tillage people, Maybe there there could be some merit to the oversized blade, but in no-till, the key is the bevel and keeping the sharp edge. There's a helpful trick to throw out here when you are changing blades. Uh, you'll have to remove your gauge wheel and then move your depth control lever that controls that gauge wheel uh, to the lowest setting. And then you, when you remove the four bolts that hold the blade, you can you can snake that blade off of the arm of the gauge wheel. It just barely clears, but it will come off of there. Um, if I'm telling you wrong on having that lever all the way down, go to the other extreme all the way up. I usually have to refresh myself when I'm doing this, but I, my recollection is have the lever all the way down. Once you have sharp blades on the drill, probably the next key item in many parts of the country is going to be ballast or frame weight. Uh, the farther west you go into the drier, arid soils, hard, dry conditions tend to be more common. This gets even more critical. This picture shows our Xapta weight bracket with John Deere suitcase weights added to it to give the extra uh, ballast to the wings. Positioning of weight is important to utilize and, and get the most leverage from that weight. So we want those weights as far back as we can to utilize that uh, the, 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 the maximum amount of down pressure from those weights. This Xapta weight bracket uh, will only work with three section cart drills. Uh, it does not, it is not recommended for CCS drills that have the seed tank on it or the five section, the big five section drills uh, where you could run into issues with folding. Here we show a picture of a toe between cart. And as you'll notice on the center section, there is uh, John Deere weights on there. Uh, for those that have a toe behind cart, obviously that's where the rear cart would uh, the cart in the rear position, toe behind, would be attached, but pulling or pulling a toe behind cart will give you down pressure just from the tug or the pull of the cart. But in this scenario, with a toe between cart, uh, frame weight is is needed. Don't forget about your box drills; they need weight and ballast uh, just like their big brothers do. Uh, this rod in the middle on this cross member is where you can mount John Deere suitcase weights and those any John Deere front end weight from the 30 series of tractors up until the brand new ones of today uh, will fit on that weight bracket. Um, the, there's just a little bit. The hookup is the same. The outside shape and diameter will slightly be different. Uh, but they'll all weigh 110 pounds a piece. This is um, actually is a 
uh, truth be known, this is a picture of my own personal drill. Honestly, I was when I first got this drill, I was not happy with how it was performing. The two things that made the most significant difference was adding these these uh, rear wheel weights and installing Uniforce. Those two made substantial differences in, in my stand and the performance of the drill. So after we've cut that seed slot, uh, we, we're then gonna drop the seed into place. And uh, to do this, we're gonna be looking at the condition of things like our main pins, leaf springs, seed boots, seed tabs, and gauge wheels. And we're also gonna touch on down pressure and rock shaft orientation. Here's a picture of the main pin. This is where the arm that has the row unit and the blade, everything mounted on it, attaches to the rock shaft. Uh, this is a wear item. This is a very critical area to pay attention to uh, because it creates the seven degree angle by holding that, that arm with the blade on it at a, at a slight angle and then the seed boot then will follow that blade and drop the seed into that slot that was that I would call the shadow of the blade. Uh, if we, when we see the kind of wear that's noticed in the picture, we have given up that seven degree angle and we'll be working with a narrower seed slot, which that in itself will create its own set of problems. If you're on top of things and, and, and looking early and starting to notice where you can go up here to that main pin and rotate it. Uh, remove the retaining bolt. You can then tap the main pin one side or the other uh, slightly uh, to where it's flush with the arm. And then on the opposite side, you should be able to grab that uh, exposed area of the main pin with a pipe wrench and turn it uh, 180 degrees. The reason for the 180 degrees is you will notice in this middle picture, the wear is very specific to just a certain section of the main pin. Only about a fourth or a third of that main pin will actually wear. The rest of the pin will look like brand new uh, and, and will not have any, any damage or wear done to it. So that's how rotating the pin will be of help. It does not address any wear that has happened to your um, bushing, but you're basically gonna cut the amount of wear or, 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 or play, excuse me, the amount of play from the wear in half just by rotating that main pin. Next up after that is the leaf spring, which holds the boot up against the blade and if you were uh, previously when you uh, changed blades this leaf spring will have uh, fallen out because it's what's holding the seed boot up against the blade uh, we recommend changing these leaf springs with every other set of opener blades they do fatigue they do lose their strength they can break or fall out uh, a way to check the condition of your leaf spring is to simply um, grab a hold of your seed boot, pull it away as far as you can, let go of it, and let it snap back against the blade. And it will produce a ringing sound. And as you go from one row to the next, that ring sound or tone should be consistent. If you have a weak leaf spring, that tone will change from a ring to more of a dull thud. That's a sign of a, a fatigued leaf spring that should be changed out. Not all leaf springs are created equal. Uh, we have developed our own leaf spring. It's the same dimensions, fits the same as the OEM, but when you test it, you will see as in this comparison here, our Exapta leaf spring has about 20% more tension to it than the original John Deere version does. There is a reason why it's only 20%. Uh, you don't want to get caught up in the fact that, well, if you can make it 20% stronger, why don't you make it 50% stronger or 70% stronger? Again, that is putting, uh, providing 
the tension of keeping the seed boot up against the blade. And with that contact, it does wear on both the boot and the blade, but primarily on the boot. As you were, if you were to increase that pressure double or higher, you would cause intense friction, accelerate the wear, and uh, possibly even get enough friction of the seed boot against the blade to stop rotation in some conditions. One of the few times where more is not always better. We want to verify our down pressure on these row units and to do that it's going to be a visual inspection of the compression of the big coil spring on the row unit. Those coils need to compress for that spring to provide down pressure. Uh, and, and so this is where you're going to you're going to be looking at those. If you do not have enough down pressure, the first problem you're going to see is hair pinning uh, or not being able to consistently cut the, the depth of seed slot you're after. If you're uh, if you want to uh, if you're not able to verify this spring tension from the compressing of the coils, um, you, you, you could also go to our Unifor system, which would then just uh, give you a pressure reading to verify that you have down pressure rather than making sure your coil spring is compressed. Also on the other end of that coil spring at the lower end, there is threads here that uh, can adjust that tension. We need to have anywhere a minimum of an inch and three quarter to a maximum of three inches of thread showing here to uh, verify that we have uh, that the tension we're looking for. Rock shaft position or orientation is critical. Uh, the rock shaft needs to be slightly past center or slightly past level tilted down in the back. Uh, that rock shaft position directly affects the orientation of the seed boot and that then also affects the tra trajectory of the seed leaving the seed boot going down into the seed slot. Too little pressure or having that rock shaft level or even tilted forward uh, will cause that seed boot to run on its nose and wear on the nose. And if we went to the other extreme, which can be uh, very easily done on a 50 series row unit because that rock shaft can actually rotate a little bit farther than it can on the 90 series, uh, that would cause the seed boot to run on its heel and uh, provide excessive wear to the heel. This is just a, uh, a, a drawing or a picture to show the different positions and how they affect that seed trajectory. The middle line here, the black line is where we want to be. That's bottom edge of the seed boot is running level with the soil surface. If we didn't have that rock shaft tilted far enough, this would be the, that would be simulated with the green line. And then if you followed the trajectory here, that would be uh, with it wearing on the nose, but also uh, having that seed coming out at a different angle. If we went to the other extreme, rock shaft extended too far, then we will find the uh, seed boot running on its heel. And again, that also will affect the trajectory of the seed or the seed drop. One of the biggest problem with this row unit design is the OEM spring. It works good in theory. It works great on a level surface, but there are virtually no fields out there that are laser level. They will change even the fields that we call flat, um, especially in no-till conditions. Even though that field appears flat, there will be depressions out in that field left over from past passes. It can be a sprayer track, a grain cart track, a, uh, a combine track are all operations that will leave little depressions in the field. If this row unit needs to drop down very slightly, only an inch, your down pressure drops off dramatically because the coil spring relaxes. If we have a hill or a bump from uh, 
to go over, then we increase that down pressure dramatically, which is causing excess compaction from the gauge wheel. Uh, this is very common with seating over terraces that you will find uh, this extreme in the terrace channel, seed laying on top of the ground. As we go over the terrace berm, then we are compressing this coil spring like crazy, which puts massive down pressure on the gauge wheel and just uh, really doing some incredible compaction from the gauge wheel on the top or the peak of that terrace. Uniforce is uh, the answer to this. This the coil spring is replaced with our hydraulic cylinder that will provide a consistent down pressure on the full range of motion. Uh, terrace channel to the terrace berm, going up the terrace, going down the back side of the terrace, that pressure always stays at whatever you've got it dialed in at. And you will have the consistent seed placement uh, in that full range of motion which is important. One of our unit force customers I like to quote uh, said, I, and I quote, he says, I knew something was different the first day I went to the field with Uniforce because the blackbirds were not out there picking up the seed out of the terrace channel. Moving on to worn seed boots. Uh, this is uh, something that will occur. It's not if, it's when. Your seed boots will eventually wear out. Running your opener blade longer than you should have past that 17 and 3 8 will accelerate uh, the wear on the seed boot as the diameter of the blade gets smaller we then begin to force this seed boot to run underground if you have a brand new 18 inch blade and a brand new seed boot everything and set up in the middle hole uh, and you're looking to seed an inch and a half to two inches deep, your seed boot is running right at ground level, not necessarily underground, but right at ground level. As the diameter of the blade changes, then we find our seed isn't the depth we want, so we grab another notch on our gauge wheel, and then we start to force the seed boot underground and causing it to wear and this is the very noticeable consistent wear is this hook begins to develop uh, on the seed boot itself one of the problems with this hook is then it creates a place for the seed to be dislodged or displaced it can end up on top of the ground it can end up embedded in the side of the seed trench a reason why. Again, touching on the seed boot and the wear items on it, uh, not only does it wear on the bottom, the other wear area is the attaching point, the, uh, the pin and the holes that go through the uh, seed boot and the arm to keep it all attached. Uh, this seed boot, as, the, as that attaching area wears, the seed boot can then begin to move up and down this particular one was able to move over an inch of up and down play which i like to say this is uh you could if you can grab that seed boot and it shakes hands with you you have a problem this is just going to be a little video clip of showing you how that is um, actually about a, a little over a half an inch about five eighths inch of movement that is even at that point, we need to start looking at fixing the problem. About a half an inch of, of up and down play is the maximum acceptable movement. And I start looking at it before we got to a half an inch. How do we fix it? The, uh, the fix kit that's been around the longest to address this boot slop is to drill this center hole out on the uh, on the arm itself and insert a bushing in there. Um, it is very effective. It is labor intense. I would only use this uh, if there was a jig with the kit to make sure that these holes are drilled out consistent and true with each other. 
And if you choose to use this repair, I would also encourage putting anti-seize on the bolt that runs through uh, through the bushing, uh, especially if your your drill, your machine is going to be stored outside. Moisture. Able to move side to side. The Pro Stitch Boot Stabilizer has been on the market a few years. Uh, we've been offering it at, at Exapta now for uh, just this calendar year. It's taken off with uh, with great success and great acceptance. It fits in between the two, what I call the ears on the arm, and then your bolt going through the seed boot or pin comes across this way. And then you adjust out. You can take these jam bolts and adjust out the play and uh, snug that up. Now, it's tempting when you are adjusting the pro stitch to take 100% of the play out. That is a no-no. You need to leave a little bit of play. If we take 100% of the play out, the seed boot is then locked onto the arm rigid and the leaf spring could not do its job to keep the boot up against the blade and you will uh, the, the the telltale sign there is then residue building up between the boot and the blade this is just a picture of the pro stitch installed uh, it, it, it's installed here you've got your pin going through the seed boot then also through the center of the pro stitch uh, notice how this seed boot then is nice and flush against the blade like it's supposed to be and again uh, just a reminder to leave at least an inch of an eighth inch of up and down play when you adjust those the eric's seed boot with shoulder bolt is a great option to consider if you're needing to replace your seed boots themselves um, the Eric's seed boot is a high wear, uh, extended wear type material, long life. Um, the shoulder bolt then will address the seed boot slop, the shoulders on the nut and on the head end of the bolt will draw up against the ears on the arm. And when they draw up tight, then your pivot area <clears throat> for the seed boot is in on the shoulders these areas right here. And so then you have a new boot on a new pivot area uh, boot slot taken care of. And it's a very easy installation. It's just as simple as installing a new seed boot. No drilling involved. Uh, and like, like the Pro Stitch, there's no drilling involved there. And uh, very uh, uh, minimal labor to, to fix the problem. Again, this is just another review of how the slop in the mounting the seed boot affects the positioning of the uh, of the opener, um, just like what we were talking about before, only it causes from a different wear item. Once we've addressed the seed boot, uh, the seed tab on the boot is another item to pay attention to especially on air seeders because that seed is traveling pneumatically it's being pushed by air it has velocity behind it and if these seed tabs are not in place doing their job you can literally blow the seed out of the seed trench with an air seeder um, upper left is the white seed tab that's oem from john deere uh, it comes out new as a rectangle shape but as it wears you will notice the shape of it. It will wear to a point, which is a shape that is very, very similar to what our Xapta Ninja flap is. It, it has a point to it, just like the shape of the seed trench. There is a competitor seed tab out there that's blue in color, um, which will perform better than the OEM, uh, but due to its extra length and very stiff structure uh, material that it's made out of, in some conditions, it can uh, cause issues with dragging the seed. And so that is just something to bear in mind with that. 
take a look at our Ninja seed flap from Exapta. What's interesting and exclusive about it is the bend that's built into it. Positioned in the seed boot, it actually has a 20 degree forward bend to trap that seed. It's also made out of a material that wears extremely well. It's very pliable and flexible, which gives it easily four to five times the wear life over an OEM or even our competitors the, over the, the competing blue seed tab, and it does not drag seed. Moving from the seed boot, uh, let's go to the, uh, to the other side of the opener blade and take a look at our gauge wheel. Gauge wheels are um, will come in two widths. Uh, the four and a half inch width has been around since the beginning of the 50 series, and more recently, a three inch uh, gauge wheel has come onto the market and gains a lot of traction. It can be preferred over the four and a half inch in no till uh, because it leaves more residue standing. And it also uh, will help keep that sidewall intact, uh, providing more down pressure to the sidewall there uh, as it passes over uh, to keep that sidewall intact. Uh, spoked rims, again, have come onto the market in the last number of years, enjoying a lot of success and popularity for obvious reasons uh, of allowing the mud to escape. Uh, but there, uh, there is also a trade-off there because then because of their open design, it is possible for stocks or some cover crops to enter in and possibly cause a uh, wrapping on the, uh, on the gauge wheel itself. Our Polyflex tire is uh, something to consider. The original versions uh, from John Deere and to this day are still rubber tires which uh, work well when they're brand new. They sh shed mud very effectively. Their downside is they wear very, very fast, especially in no-till where we're working with uh, heavy residue that can be very abrasive to uh, rubber, rubber tires and wear them out very quickly. It's not unheard of to hear that rubber tires uh, can literally be worn out in one season. This is a picture of our Polyflex tire just simulating or, or showing how it can flex and go over a small stone and not raise up the whole row unit to keep your seed placement consistent at the depth that you're, you're set for. Gauge wheel tire adjustment is important. On the left here, we see a properly adjusted gauge wheel tire that is making slight contact against the blade. And as that row unit goes down is and, and then working in the field working position, the, the tire will actually seal against the uh, opener blade uh, from the pressure of the ground and cause a seal to keep out dirt, dust, debris uh, it's very common and very easy for gauge wheels to be misadjusted, and you can see there's daylight coming through here. There is actually, um, there's this particular drill, there is quite easily three-eighths inch of gap here, uh, which um, can cause problems, allow that sidewall to fall in uh, too quickly, allow the, the, the dust from the from the top of the ground to fall in on top of the seed if it's not firmed all the way up against the blade. So again, we want to have slight contact of the tire against the blade. The condition of the tire is extremely important and the most vital part is the lip. Here you can see what's very typical of a rubber tire as there's a section here of lip that is gone. It's missing. Again, that will cause the same problem as a tire that is misadjusted and not uh, contacting the blade. Uh, down here, the, the tire lip is still uh, available and it does contact it and then it has eroded or broken away. And when this rotates down, there will be a gap. 
and again, we encourage you to consider using our Polyflex tire as a replacement tire that can uh, flex and uh, but give you the long life of polyurethane against uh, residue. This just simulates and shows how the gauge wheel tire works, what its job is. It actually needs to uh, hold this soil down and actually compress it somewhat to make a, a defined sidewall. So as the blade leaves, that sidewall stays intact uh, before the firming wheel or while until the firming wheel can come along and press that seed uh, down to the bottom of the seed trench. If we do not have that pressure on there, it can then cause what uh, what is termed fissures, which are, are, are gaps in the soil structure that a seed then could get lodged in the sidewall itself uh, if there's not enough adequate down pressure. Seize depth axles. This is a very common problem on air seeders uh, and box drills. And one of the challenges and one of the concerns is how to fix this. There is no easy fix. I've we've heard different theories on how to do it. Anything from never greasing them to greasing to auto auto lube systems that grease continually to replacing grease with other substances like anti seize, uh, fluid film. Uh, you name it. It's been tried. Uh, long story short, they may buy you a little bit of time. But if uh, what is very common on these machines is to have this depth adjuster arm and the axle seize up to where when you go to try and change your depth setting, it's rigid or you have to use the help of a hammer or a pry tool or something to force it to move. The only way to cure this is to completely disassemble it, remove the axle from the from the housing and clean all the old dirt grease dirt grease combination out of there thoroughly clean it replace your seals replace your uh, wear items of the sleeve in there go back together the problem with doing that is it's temporary it's not a uh, it's not a permanent fix and if you the only permanent fix for this is to replace it with the Eric's bushing kit. Whoa, where did my slides go? Okay. This one here. The Eric's gauge wheel axle kit is the only long term permanent solution. This sleeve that goes inside the axle housing on the inside of it has a Teflon uh, coating or lining to it. It will allow you to re reuse your depth arm. Um, even if it's war, it will it will still work. Uh, but the Teflon will provide the lubrication and there will be no need to grease the axle shaft. Once you leave the grease out of the equation, the possibility of seizing up goes away and we are able to then keep these axles running freely uh, without greasing them. So I highly encourage uh, you to consider this as the way to address the seized up axles. Cover plates and the T-handle. The black ones on the right would be the OEM version. Also showing you how you change your depth. They have this crisscross uh, <clears throat> depth setting to them. Especially on drills that do not have enough ballast on them. These will wear rapidly and the row unit will then start to chatter uh, because there's wear on the notches of the uh, cover plate. The uh, the gold colored bright colored uh, this is the Eric's cover plate uh, side by side. If you can notice or measure the, the, the depth or the thickness of the material, it is more than twice as thick as the OEM version. And you'll have a new T handle to go along with it. You will have the same number of depth settings 
on the Eric's cover plate as you do on the OEM John Deere version, but they're all straight across depth settings. There's no need for the crisscross action that is can seem confusing and difficult uh, to to keep track of, and it, uh, it it will be a long term solution to the wear on cover plates. Once we've got the seed placed in the bottom of the seed trench, step three then is to firm that seed. And this has been one of the things that I think has been uh, part of the uh, success and popularity of this row unit is that it has a seed firming uh, device to it, which is especially the farther west we go into the lower rainfall areas, this can be the difference between getting a good stand of your in your field versus a spotty poor stand is to be able to press that seed the bottom of the seed trench and embed it in the moisture rather than just dropping it on top of the moisture and hope it all works out the firming wheel and the firming wheel arm uh, are wear items as well there is a pivot point here for the firming arm just like there is for the 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 closing arm that we'll talk about later um, you can get side significant side to side play in the arm that the firming wheel is mounted to however in the order of importance uh, we rank this one pretty low uh, because that firming wheel has a trench to run in it will always find that seed slot and and run in the seed trench where it where it's needed if you're looking to save a few dollars uh, this would be one you can put off for quite a while without compromising uh, the job that your row unit does for you the firming wheel themselves there's been a uh, uh, a change over time and this picture here just shows uh, how time has changed that uh, these first two large diameter and very thick firming wheels came off of the original 50 series drills and as time moved on then John Deere did bring the diameter down and narrow it up somewhat a uh, competitor brought a, uh, a wheel to the market that's that's now green in color that is even narrower than than the John Deere wheel at that time. The two wheels here on the right, uh, the, the very right one, the yellow one is our Exapta Duralock wheel. The one next to it is the current version, which would be on the new drills or the Pro Series row unit. Same diameter, same nine inch diameter as our Exapta Duralock. Very narrow in design. All three of these are all very close in their width with the Duralock wheel being the narrowest of all three uh, current popular choices. We are just under a half an inch, 0.45 in width, and both uh, the John Deere and the green wheel are slightly over a half an inch in their width. A couple of things about the Duralock is again the, the the narrowness of it, the flexibility. The this polyurethane material can flex so that the, it's able to follow the seed boot if you're uh, following drilling on a contour uh, or following a curve. It has a, a two-piece bolt-on bearing housing uh, that, that can uh, um, makes for easy access to that bearing to replace it that bearing will fail it's not if it fails it's when it's failed and the main reason is remember it's running in a dirty environment it's running just slightly above ground level right there in a very very dirty uh, dusty conditions many times the duralock also allows you to run at maximum pressure uh, and be able to fit the uh, down into that seed slot firm the seed and if we are on moist, damp conditions, it also sheds mud very well. Other options out there. Uh, some people are very insistent on being able to, to do an in-furrow liquid 
whether it's a, a pop-up fertilizer, a biologic, whatever reason you're wanting to put some kind of liquid product in the furrow. Some people will then look to a ketone to do this, uh, apply liquid through the ketone. We do not recommend a ketone on a John Deere row unit because of the um, because it's set up on a rock shaft and the position of that will change with the orientation of your rock shaft. You can go from, uh, again, the, the position of that Keaton changes with the rock shaft positioning. If you are insistent on going that route of being uh, in furrow with liquid, uh, consider the fin, F-I-N, it's made by Shaffert, will bolt onto your existing uh, arm it's a much larger, thicker piece of uh, urethane material that gives you that liquid option and, uh, and will outlast a ketone many times over. So let's do a quick review of what's, what potential problems are for in con causing inconsistent seed placement. Uh, Seed boot wear is, is one of the most common, along with seed boot slop. Those two are, are big. Uh, seed bounce flaps can, that are missing, worn or broken. Gauge wheels conditions, whether the lip is worn or they're misadjusted. Uh, firming wheels that are too wide or missing that are not able, too wide of a wheel that cannot fit down in the seed slot. Uh, to do the job it needs, improper air or fan speed, and worn cover plates and T-handles are all items that we've just talked about that can contribute to your seed placement or inconsistencies. So once we've placed that seed, the last step we have to accomplish is to close that seed furrow and ideally, we want to do that by chopping the sidewall. Uh, for this to happen properly, we want to know that the condition of that closing arm bushing is good so that that um, closing wheel is held in the right position all the time. We want to have the proper spring tension on that closing arm. Over tensioning on spike wheels like the Thompson wheels, it is possible to dislodge and dig up the seed if we put apply too much spring tension. We really want you to consider replacing those solid cast wheels because they can overpack uh, the soil and they hop in corn stalks or any kind of heavy stalks, whether it's corn, milo, uh, sunflowers. Uh, those are all things that cause those solid cast wheels to be hopping and bouncing. We also want the uh, want you to consider our Thompson wheel. Because of its uh, narrow design, it can penetrate the ground easily and chop or crumble that sidewall to bring loose soil back over the top of the seed. On this closing arm, the pivot area is important and the condition of it. We want to be able to make sure that we have no more than a quarter inch uh, either side of center on the closing arm back there at the closing wheel which is not very much. Uh, the, if you have more than a total of half an inch of play, each uh, a total of half an inch, look at replacing the uh, bushings and sleeve that are in the pivot area up here with the Eric's greaseless kits. And then that will hold your arm in position. It'll also eliminate the need for greasing because they utilize Teflon as well. Here is just an, uh, shows you an example of excessive side-to-side -side play. That particular closing wheel has well over an inch of side-to-side -side play. And the problem with that is, is when you follow a contour, that spiked wheel, that Thompson wheel, can then drift over the top of the seed trench and dig up the seed. one more time there and then we move ahead here's one of the problems of uh, misadjusted closing wheels will cause at planting time this was done just a couple of short weeks ago uh, right 
right here in central Kansas. We just had a nice little rain. There's opportunity to do some double crop. Moisture was excellent, but this was a misadjusted closing wheel. That Thompson wheel was running too far to the side and it would bring up ribbons of moist soil. And then three days later, after temperatures of the upper 90s to bumping 100, that ribbon of soil turned into a stick or a brick. It went completely hard and underneath it, it may not show up very well here, but that is a soybean seed that was attempting to push through this brick. It never made it. It turned white, it gave up, it died out because what was a good thing, we thought, you know, the customer uh, producer thought he was chopping the sidewall. He did close the seed trench. The hot winds quickly turned that ribbon, that moist ribbon into a brick. And uh, basically it turned into an epic stand failure. This is just a picture of the Eric's bushing kits, uh, steel sleeve, Teflon bushings, the Teflon again providing the lubrication, seals to keep the dust out, uh, everything fits into the, uh, into the uh, uh, castings without any modifications. There are other greaseless bushing kits on the market. Our competitor has a nylon uh, bushing that will provide lubrication and is truly greaseless as well. But when you look at nylon, Teflon, and the OEM steel, and also some aftermarket steel bushings, here's the differences. Nylons, uh, nylon does not have the load capacity or the shock resistance, and nylon can actually absorb water. And this can be important, again, to drills that are stored outside and exposed to to, to moisture. Steel on steel requires lubrication. If you, if you don't lubricate them, you've got friction, you've got resistance. The problem with greasing is what we have all are aware of. You mix grease and dirt together, it turns into concrete. As long as these seals are doing their job, they supposedly keep the, the dirt out, but they will eventually bake break down, deteriorate, and allow dirt to start to enter in. These Eric's kits come out of Australia. They've been developed and proven in what is what are can be some very harsh, dusty uh, climates of Australia, and they're also very large acres. Uh, uh, it's very common uh, for those t large operations to be able to run their seeding equipment 24 7 literally around the clock changing operators uh, literally changing oil in the field while they're drilling uh, while they're stopping to fill up seed and and continue to go so they're they have extremely large operations in comparison to what we have in north america if they hold up over in australia they will hold up here in the states Going to touch briefly on the OEM cast wheel that's been out on the market for nearing 40 years now, uh, well over 30 years. Again, this cast wheel will do somewhat of a decent job in most all conditions, but we're looking to fine tune and uh, adapt to uh, primarily no-till conditions, but then through the course of time, with uh, things like uh, Roundup resistant uh, uh, BT corn stalks, very hard to break down, very tough. These are things that we have to deal with then on the next uh, seeding pass. Uh, we highly recommend you looking and considering uh, a spiked wheel like the Thompson wheel. Uh, here, this would be our T44 version that we currently have with the bolt-on replaceable star wheel. Uh, if we've placed that seed, firmed it, and then properly, we should then just be able to bring loose soil back over the top. Loose soil prevents out, uh, pre prevents the, from drying too fast uh, and losing that moisture. 
and uh, but it also gets the opportunity for a quicker emergence. Your seed is going to emerge faster out of a uh, loose soil than it will out of a packed pressed soil. Um, it promotes your oxygen exchange for the seed and uh, it also um, will allow uh, the soil warming in these in some oversaturated conditions as well. Sidewall breakage again that is that can be very important uh, especially if we're a little on the damp side to chop that sidewall to make sure we get the uh, some loose soil for those roots to develop properly. Uh, you do want to run enough tension to chop that sidewall, uh, but not overpower the star wheel to where it could kick the seed out. Thompson wheels require very little down pressure. Almost always you will be running on the lightest tension setting uh, to, to achieve this. This is just a comparison of what we would simulate uh, different styles of closing wheels. Uh, if you get our catalog, you see this uh, in, in every issue. The top one would be the solid, simulating the solid cast wheel. Uh, this one with curved spikes on it would be simulating a Dawn curve tine wheel. The third row here, that would be simulating a Martin uh, spader wheel. And then this bottom line would be simulating a Martin crumbler wheel. Again, they all have areas where they shine, but they also have areas where they struggle, and those are denoted over on the side here. Again, the Thompson wheel, like we've been talking, uh, narrow design, design penetrates very easily. This picture would actually be uh, from a corn planter using two closing wheels, uh, but simulating the same thing of fracturing that sidewall. Um, on the drill with the single disc, the reason we get away with only running one Thompson wheel is the side that did not have a, uh, uh, a place for a closing wheel, that sidewall never had a gauge wheel on it. It was never pressed or packed. Uh, it would it should be in the same mellow no-till condition that we found it. But on the other side where the gauge wheel ran, that's the side that needs to have the sidewall chopped and broken up on. This is just going to be a uh, taking a quick look at that uh, T44 in action. Notice how smooth those wheels run. They're not hopping and bouncing. They're just staying very consistent, doing their job, closing that seed trench and running smooth. And then last, we're going to be winding things down. We're going to talk briefly about row cleaners. Um, Eric's offers a row cleaner, and we have uh, we have sold those uh, to to some of our customers, primarily up north. Uh, they are designed to run in small grain stubble. Uh, they are not recommended for heavy stocks like corn stocks, um, and they also uh, take some time to adjust. We want to make sure that we still can leave a little bit of cover over that row. We don't want to uh, dig a black trench with them that would then leave the soil exposed to um, erosion, whether it be wind or rain. Uh, and and uh, But this is an option for some specialty applications, like I say, especially in the Northwest uh, and, and up into Canada. This just shows where one row cleaner was installed and adjusted, and in this condition, it made a significant difference uh, because it was able to mush, push or rake the residue out of the way. Now, this, there is a rest of the story here where, that we may not be privy to. What was the condition of the opener blades in these other rows that were struggling? Could it be the fact that there was just uh, the blades needed to be replaced and we were having hairpinning going on? 
again, those are all things. Uh, the row cleaner really shined in this one, uh, but we just want to make sure, uh, you know, could this could this have been done just with proper, could a better stand have resulted with proper maintenance? So we're going to move into a question and answer time here as we wind down our time together and uh, be looking at uh, also just want to remind you and let you know we have other information available. We've got uh, DVDs and uh, newsletters. These newsletters are all free access on our website. Uh, tons of information here. Uh, some of these letters uh newsletters may have some age on them they may be 10 years old but the problem is still relevant today and the answers are still relevant today and so with that we want to hear from you let's take a look at uh questions that may have shown up and uh, hey dale one of the questions um can you use the John Deere T handle with the Eric's cover plate? Uh, the question is, can we use the T handle, the, the, the OEM T handle with the cover plate? The Eric's. Theoretically, yes. Uh, I would caution against it because if you're replacing your cover plate because it's worn out, there will be an equal amount of wear on the John Deere T handle. And so, um you're only uh, you're only taking away half of the wear by replacing the cover plate uh, it's it's kind of like uh, so theoretically yes it could be done do i recommend it no okay um and if anybody has any questions that we're, we haven't covered Again, if you go to the top of the screen, there's a chat button or a Q&A button. Um, we have a couple here coming in. Um, yeah, just a minute, let me pop that window open. Um, is there any consistent yield benefit to Uniforce if there is already a good stand or emergence from the OEM springs and soybeans in most conditions? In, in most conditions, we will be able to improve the stands. Uh, it's very common that when we're drilling, when we're planting soybeans with a drill, that we have to use a higher seeding rate than if we're using a corn planter. We, with By adding uniforce and getting the seat placement more consistent, We've had numerous customers across the Midwest that have been able to drop their seeding rates down and get very, very close to the same seed drop and same stand count that corn planters are doing just by adding Uniforce. Uh, the next question on a box drill, um, is it easier to rebuild in place or take off rock, the rock shaft? That's a good question. On box drills, um, part of it depends on how much rebuilding you're doing. If you're only putting on new opener blades uh, and, and leaf springs, I would probably not remove it. Uh, if you're going to do a complete rebuild, main pins, closing arm, firming arm, seed boot, and blades, then I would go to the trouble of removing the row unit from the drill. Okay. Um, another question, do you ship products anywhere in the world? Yes, we've been able to ship, uh, you know, outside of the United States. Uh, many times it gets very expensive, uh, but yes, we do. Uh, we do go into Canada quite often. Uh, and we have shipped product into Europe. Uh, that is, you know, that has all happened this year. Okay. Have you thought about a weight bracket for the CCS seeders? We have. 
yes, and it is something that we will be working on. There is challenges there, obviously, with the seed tank. Uh, so it is something we're working on. Okay, um, Polyflex available for three inch. Is that is it available on a three inch narrow gauge wheel? Today, no, uh, but we are getting very close. We have three inch Polyflex tires, uh, prototypes that are out running. We are in uh, we are in the final testing phases. Best case scenario, possibly fourth quarter this year. Uh, reality says next year. Okay, um, then we have for winter storage of the machine, would it be an idea to put uh, WD-40 onto the main pins to avoid rust? There's nothing wrong with that uh, on, on air seeders. If they're not able to be stored inside, I would recommend storing them unfolded so that the water would run off rather than trying to run into those pivot areas, whether it's the main pin, closing arm, and things like that. Um, we want to know want, want to know the cost of the Thompson wheel for a 50 drill. Thompson wheel for the 50 series. Uh, would use the the same Thompson wheel we use on the, the the corn planters that has the big bearing in it with a five year warranty on it, and uh, those were at um, help me Kim 155. Mm -hmm. The 145. I believe. 145. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. um, a couple years back, there was Uniforce Down Pressure Row monitoring in development. What's the status? That's a fair question. Uh, it's on hold. It's very expensive. And uh, right now, return on investment, ROI is a buzzword. And that is a challenge. It's, it's nice to be able to see numbers in the cab and be able to change things from the cab. Uh, but the ROI is a question. And then the convenience of it is do you, not the convenience, the clutter is a concern of adding another monitor into the cab, do, or do we want to try and interface with uh, existing monitors that are there or existing ISO bus systems? There's different choices there to pursue, and the that's a still a work in progress. Okay. Um, is a uniforce row by row downforce by section or just one setting for the whole machine? So it is uh, the best way. My, my knee jerk reaction is to say it's both. You will have one setting. You will set all of your rows to one pressure. And for example, let's say we're going to dial in. Uh, 900 pounds on our on our down pressure. That will be every row unit on the drill will have the same 900 pounds on it, but it will it will stay consistent. Uh, it's not section it's not section control, uh, and as one or two row units need to change, they will always have the same load set to them. That same 900 pound setting. It is possible to plumb uh, rows that run in wheel tracks behind the tractor. It is possible to, uh, with some plumbing changes, to give those wheel track tractor tracks extra pressure, but not something we do very often. Um, what could be another cause for residue to build up between the opener disc and seed boot? Um, leaf's their leaf spring seems okay. Seed boot itself, uh, there is there are some aftermarket seed boots on the market that are very poor quality. They do not fit 
it's flush against the blade from day one and they literally have to wear into place uh so that would be if uh if you if that problem occurred after changing seed boots i would be very suspicious of the replacement seed boot um is there a way to check proper fan speed in the field there there are some uh some some infield tests with basically removing a secondary line um, engage your meter roll so seed is moving and hold that uh, hold that secondary hose up into the air let the seed push up into the air and then uh, measure how far up the seed goes before it free falls back to the ground uh, there there is a way to do that i'd have to i don't recall what that measurement is i want to say it's about a foot 10 inches or a foot before, but I'd have to double check on that one. Okay. So far, that is the last question in the chat box. Oh, we have one more. Um, John Deere 1590 drill uh, stopped up planting and heavy dew. Several tubes backed up. Um, he's a rookie at this. Um, should I not drill while cover crop is wet? that's a challenge that we can run into uh working in damp conditions and and from the, from the dew if if everything is in good shape my first concern or my first question is do we have sharp blades if we have sharp blades and we're still struggling cutting residue in those damp conditions then the only option we have then is to wait until the dew is off um, I liken it to uh, how we harvest with our combines uh, is maybe how we really need to be looking at how we run these drills in heavy residue. I'm not going to blanket sa and say you should only drill when conditions are good enough to harvest when the dew is off, but in heavy conditions with a lot of residue, uh, if everything else, if we've got sharp blades, if we've got proper ballast on the drill, we can cut through a lot of residue, but if it's still hair pitting, you just may have to wait for it to dry off. Okay, um, another question. Have you looked into seed breaks for improved seed spacing to remove air pressure right above the row? Seed breaks, uh, it, it, it's a topic. Uh, we, you know, we have a competitor that's very animate about them. Um, I liken a seed break to consider this. If you're running a truck, if you've got your 18 wheeler loaded up with crop and you're headed to the bin site and you're rolling along at 50 mile an hour and you come up on that intersection and you put in the clutch, does that stop your truck? No, that's what I liken a seed break to. It, I, I chuckle at the word break. I really think it should be called a clutch because it really, on air seeders, the seed is being pushed by air. Air will go the path of least resistance. The seed breaks that are on the market, the, the, the mesh, uh, yes, some air will find its way out of those fine meshed holes, but the vast majority of that air is still traveling down the tube and into the seed boot itself. And so we really, all we did was let off the gas, so to speak. Uh, so I, to answer the question, no, we're, we're not looking into a seed break. We've, we've studied them. We've looked at different kinds. We've looked at Venturi's, we've looked at the meshes. Uh, each of them has their own problem. Um, the other option that we offer is the seed view that actually mounts on the uh, top of the outlet head itself to let off the air before it gets down to the seed boot. Okay. 
That was the last question in the chat box, Dale. Okay, great. <laughs> oh. <laughs> we have one more popped up. Did okay. you want to answer this one real quick? Um, better fan setup configuration versus OEM. Don't really have an alternative for fan setup as far as I'm, I'm assuming that's referring to the type of fan that that turbine type fan that is being utilized. I really don't know what we would do, what could be done any different than that. So to answer the there, there, there is an aftermarket uh, high speed fan that can go even higher volumes. Uh, but don't have any hands on experience with it. I'm just aware of it. Okay, I think that's the last one. Do you want to go ahead and wrap up Dale or? Okay, yes. Again, just thank you everybody that, that that's hung on and 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 uh, worked through this. Um, and, and again, feel free to reach out to us by phone, by email and and uh, with any questions and follow ups. Uh, and, and we look forward to hearing from you. We do have uh, an amazing amount of inventory, even in uh, we've, we've been able to build inventory to be able to provide you those replacement parts you need. Uh, also, our new location in McPherson has allowed us to warehouse those and, and keep them on hand. So we are uh, positioned with inventory to be able to help you get these dr drills rebuilt during this little window of time between uh, double cropping and fall seeding uh, to uh, to be ready for the next go round. So give us a call 785-820-8000. And with that, uh, again, we just thank you and we definitely appreciate your business.